Hello. Welcome to my little studio. It's so good that you're here. I'm grateful to see you. Well, today we're going to be working on ephemera. And what ephemera is, is the small little bits of enhancements that you can use in your art journal. And I like to pre-make some. You can buy them and they're beautiful. But if you've followed me in any of my videos, and if you, ha if you haven't, please like and subscribe and then you'll be notified when there's new videos. But if you've been following me, I really prefer not to buy too many supplies like that, but rather make my own. So these are the supplies you're going to need and my desk might get a little full, but that's okay. The first thing is glue stick. And in another video, I promised I'd talk about glue sticks a little bit. Glue sticks are um, many, many styles. I like this one. It's Scotch Permanent Glue Sticks. And the reason why I like them is they continue to stick. I'm going to pull one out and put the packaging away. I just wanted to show you the packaging. But the reason why... I like these is they are designed for adults to use to permanently stick things. If you go to the dollar store or if you go to other discount stores like Walmart and, and even office supply stores and you pick up do the, the Dollar Tree ones or you pick up some at the, um, in the, in the supply store, the office supply store, they often are children's grade. And they're designed to not really stick well uh, because it, they want it to be washable. So if your child starts glue sticking things to the wall or to themselves or to their clothes or to the dining room table, you can get it off. This isn't designed that way. I would never hand this to a child. But for our purposes, a good permanent glue stick. Um, there are craft sticks. There are even glue sticks that you can buy at the hardware store that are really designed to stick. So this one for me has stick, sticks well and it has stuck on some of my projects for literally years. So get yourself a glue stick. And this is my glue book, but I'm showing you this because the ephemera we're gonna make is postage stamps, fake or faux postage stamps. This is a, a phone book that came to me and what it has is small pictures. See like these small little balloons. So you can cut out of something like this advertising that came to your home, small little, okay, like this sun, small little icons that you can use as faux postage. So this I'm gonna use for gluing on top of, but it's a good resource. You're gonna need a couple of sheets of printer paper, you're going to, if you have them, rubber stamps can be a great way to do faux postage. Now, this is from, I think it's called Euro Elements. This one and this one, which is a, a stamping frank. It's, it's for postage franking, you know, cancel the stamp type of thing. If you don't have one of those, don't worry. This one just has elements that are small, and I thought maybe we could cut out some of those. This one happens to say on it um, that it's an airmail post. So I've got that one. And this is just a fleur de lis. So you kind of get the idea. They're small ones. I also grabbed a couple of large flowers. And I can show you how you can use those because maybe you have something like that. So set those aside. A uh, couple of uh, acrylic stamping blocks. You don't have to have them, but if you do, it's easier. Um, these are just a couple of other small stamps that I have. The reason why I grabbed, I'm going to bring this one back. The reason why I grabbed this one is because it's music notes. But the thing about music notes is that it's got those lines. So you can kind of fake yourself a little uh, franking stamp with some music notes. Another acrylic block, ink. I recommend a permanent ink. Now this is the Distress and it's four. And this one's from Tim Holtz. It is a better bargain to buy the four in one than it is to buy the four individual ones. And I've used this for years and I can buy re-inkers for it, but any 
permanent stamp. So things like stays on, things like um, the archival line, these are designed for permanent. And because we're working on some slippery, shiny surfaces, you're really going to want something like this because once you put it on, it won't rub off. So we need that. You might have some uh, ads. And I, this is just a ad from uh, Lane Bryant. You may find some small pictures in here. This is my under paper for when I'm working and I'm trying to keep acrylic paint and I can show you how we can use this to make faux postage. So I'm gonna set this aside. This is a book that I'm getting ready to turn into another art journal, but uh, I need to pull pages out of it because as you art journal, the books become bulkier. So as I was pulling pages out, I found some small pictures. So, you know, an old book with small pictures, these are painty papers. And what I did was, this is from that same book I just showed you, and there's some of the pages that I had to pull out. And so I just did some little drawings. I use these a lot of ways, but I use them for collage backgrounds, collage fodder. So I took some of these, and I'll show you how I'm gonna use these in faux postage. If you're interested, in how I created these um, collage papers, then go ahead and leave me a comment and I'd be more than happy to give you a tutorial on how I make these types of small and large collage sheets. Set those aside. This is another great way to get some small pictures. This is my city's uh, little what's going on in the city type of things. But do you see small little pictures? Here's a little symbol from the fire department. So you can get some small pictures from this type of mail that you get. This is from a 12 by 12 paper pad. Here's this. I do not buy them often. As a matter of fact, I haven't bought a paper pad in at least five years. Got this one on sale from, um, it's reflect or, uh, wrote, Recollections, yeah, recollections from Michaels. And normally these only sell for like $5.99 or two for $10, but this was a buy one, get one free. So I bought a couple of these. This is a sheet out of it that I know for my work, I will never use a 12. This is designed for scrapbooking, but see this area here? We can use this to make some faux postage. So just a few ideas. I've already harvested um, some of these and I'm going to show you. So the first thing we're going to need is our printer paper. So here I've got a couple of sheets of printer paper. Now when I do this project, I usually do more than one sheet. Um, I do it kind of a gang style or kind of a um, assembly line to get a lot made save them and then use them at, as I want. So I'm gonna start gluing. And so I've got my glue stick, open that guy up, got my little pad. And you may not be able to always see me gluing. I'm trying to stay in frame because I brought you in just a little closer. But I'm gonna go ahead and start gluing some of these little elements, trimming them up, they, they need trimming. So this one was from one of the books and it's just a little skyline of Detroit. So I'm just gonna cut it out. Now, in the United States, our postage stamps are pretty um, uniform in size, but in other parts of the country, they're not. So go ahead and if you wanna make them a little bigger, a little smaller, you'll even find some postage is in the shape of triangles. It's it's just all kinds of shapes. So I'm just trying to square this up a little bit. It won't be perfect, but that's all right. So we're gonna glue this guy on. And as I glue them, and see I put it on my glue book so I don't get the glue all over my paper. And then I go ahead and I'm gonna glue this on. And I, I want a fairly generous white border around it. Here is from advertising. This is just a tiny little 
old, old silly putty ad. So I'm going to cut it out. It has its own little border. I'm going to take that off because we're going to be using the white border. And if this part is boring to you, well, fast forward, I guess, because we're going to be doing a little bit of cutting. I, as I said, I did go ahead and uh, trim them up so you're not seeing me harvest from publication to publication, leaving a fairly white, large white border between. And let's get rid of these scraps. And let's grab another one. I'm going to get one more of these little ads. And uh, this is an, a very old vintage ad from an Amana microwave. This is so old that the microwave is opening down instead of like a door. It's opening, coming towards you. That's old. I saw them. I'm old enough to remember them, but... I sure haven't seen one in a maybe a decade. Let's get some glue on this guy. And again, I want to leave a generous white margin around them. So on we go. Okay, um, I'm going to skip some of these because they're um, it's repetition. Okay, this was from uh, the Lane Bryant thing. And all I did was I cut out some of these flowers. So I just thought I can cut a little square of these flowers and use them in my stamps. I'm going to square it up just a little bit. Put that on there. But I'm, I think you can kind of get the idea of where I'm going with this. You just want... As I say, kind of icons, little little small things that you can turn into postage, but that the picture can be small and still make some sense. Now, this is from food packaging. This is from a Hunt's tomato can. There's a little round heart. It says heart healthy. And then this one says 100% natural. So I think I'm going to go for the heart healthy so we'll see how we can cut it out where it can still make a little bit of sense and look like some faux postage. I think if I cut that T off, I'm going to make it just a little too small. We can still kind of square it up. This will be a, a tiny stamp. But, you know, if you look at European stamps, uh, especially the older ones, you can... Find they've got tiny stamps. Maybe they were designed for postcards. I'm not really sure, but they've got in Canada too. Some real little stamps. So we're not going beyond the scope of realistic at all. Okay, now this. Do you remember those painty papers that I showed you? Well, one of the things I did was I drew with a sharpie on top of one of those painty papers and just cut a heart out. So I'm going to go ahead and glue that on. I think I have a couple of these. And we can glue these on. That'll make a cute stamp. Remember the love stamps? I don't know if they make them anymore, but the U.S. Postage used to make those. Okay, this is... Um, I just took a, my circle punch and I punched out some of these. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut them in quarters like this. And then it turns into kind of modern art. So I'm going to glue it up. Sorry if I'm out of the frame, but you know what adding glue stick to a piece looks like. I know I get quiet when I'm concentrating and straighten it up a little bit. We'll put a couple of those on. And look, we've already got two rows. Isn't that great? And I'll save this one. So we've already got two like this. And I've got this one. I think it's pretty. Cut it in half and again in half. And again, it's going to look like modern art. 
something that they got out of the New York Museum of Modern Art. Yep, Museum of Modern Art, Julie, same. <laughs> in my wildest dreams. If I ever end up in the New York Museum of Modern Art, I will be sure to let you know. Okay, I do want to be sure that the edges are down as, as best I can. Some of these look like they're coming up, but they're not. It's just that the paper's buckling a little bit underneath. Here's another of the painty papers, but this one I'm going to go ahead and cut into, let's do a rectangle. We've got a lot of square shapes, but there's a lot of rectangle stamps also. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this into a rectangle and my glue book is getting sticky so I'm gonna have to turn the page on that but that's okay that one will that one will be okay but I'm just gonna rip this off and we'll make another rectangle out of this and then we'll have two of these my fingers are getting sticky. If you don't want your fingers dirty, this isn't the medium for you. But I think you can handle it. I really do. Okay, so we got two of those. Nice, nice. I am saving some little bits because, as I said, I'm going to be making some more. Um, here's some more painty papers, but I'm not going to add more of those. Now, this is from that book. And I hope you can see it. There's a, a little house on there. So I'm going to just kind of trim it to get that house and try to keep it stamp size. And there we go. So the small little pictures that make nice little faux postage, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. Let's, let's recap. We found some on food packaging. Uh, we found some on some of the advertisements that we get in the mail, uh, those little phone books that your city may put out, those little newsletters that your city may put out where they're kind of bragging about the city. This one has just a little garden gate in the fall. We're going to go ahead and use that. Give it a cut. And again, I'm cutting off the white border because we're setting it on a white border. So, get some glue on this. Really working to make sure I get the edges. And put that on there. Leave enough space between. I know this looks awfully far apart. Here's another one from the book. Now. At first glance, this is too big, but see that chair? I think that's perfect. So I'm gonna cut out this little porch chair and use it as some faux postage. I think it's adorable. I feel like, or I, I kind of get the sensation of when I would do miniatures, like, uh, doll houses and things and it was so fun so fun i enjoy that if any of you have that hobby of miniatures i just think they're beautiful let me know in the comments because i'd be interested to hear now there's a second chair and i'm going to go ahead and grab it and i even have the little porch light included so we're going to add this because i just think it's adorable there we go a little more glue and I go through glue sticks you can see I bought a big multi-pack and I go through them and there nice okay um, got a few more spaces on here I do have some more little guys but I'm gonna save them if we have room that's fine uh, these were from that it was that newsletter from my city, but you can just see where I've picked out some other ones. But I'm going to just save those aside because I want to show you the rubber stamps and we've only got a few spaces left. So with the rubber stamps, 
I'm going to grab this because remember I told you that I really, I, I would never use this, but this area I think is great. So I'm just going to cut out a little portion of this so it's a little bit more manageable for me. I'll set this aside. I try not to throw out or waste too much. I'm going to go ahead and cut this gold off because I I just don't think it would be helpful in this instance. Now, stamps. Remember I told you, you maybe you've got like some nice large florals like this, and I think we can use them. We're going to give it a try because I really would feel better if you, and here, maybe you can see it better this way. I would feel better if we can you know, kind of use a bit of variety in the supplies. I'm going to need to grab my ink pad. And this color in the corner is the black. So I'm going to use the black because I really would like it to show. And I'm going to gently, don't over press, just go gentle. And now my work surface that I'm on is pretty hard. And so sometimes to get a better print, it's better if you use something soft. So I'm going to just turn this over and set this on this gushy magazine. Now I'm going to have to stand up to get a good impression. So here we go. Let's get this. And give your stamp a good push and a few seconds for the ink to transfer. Some people just pound and then lift up. You don't get as good of an impression. That's great. That's great. Let's do another one. And again, I'm not positive how these are going to show up, but this is a flower that's sort of set up in a different direction, but I think it will work. So I'm going to grab my ink again. And this corner is the black, which is what I want. So I'm going to ink it up. Don't rub because then you just end up piling up ink along all the lines. You just want to tap, tap, gentle tapping. And here we go. Doesn't matter how close we are. And press and hold for a few seconds. And let's see what we get. Good. Okay. I think that'll be enough to show you the what we're what we're trying to achieve here so put the ink away I did stand up to do that so now sit back down and cut these out they dry fairly fast and and this wasn't a heavy ink so I'm gonna try to stay kind of square as I finish cutting this out I do have a trimmer but I just don't think it's necessary at this point and then what I'm gonna do yeah it's sticky then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this into fours and see, yeah, see, I, th I think that's fine. We're going to glue that guy on. That one, not so much. How about this one? Nah. Okay. So these are going to go. Take rid of the trash. But now let's see what we can do with this one. Kind of square it up. I'm not leaving too much of an edge. Maybe we can do this one as a rectangle stamp. I think we can. I think that's pretty. Okay, so we got two out of that one. So again, you can see that there is a variety of things that you can harvest or create so that you can make these stamps. And they really are fun. You can even put them, like if you're sending out a card, you can use them on the back as kind of a closure, you know, to on the back where the flap comes down and you can go ahead and use it there. You can use them when you're making tags, maybe gift tags or something like that. You can use them and make those things that you put on a package to and from just it just adds a little bit of interest it's something homemade 
and I, I think they're, they're gorgeous. I'm, I, I don't feel like I'm compromising. I don't feel like I am just making an excuse to do some art, but rather really creating something useful. All right. There. Okay. So the next step. They do make, I'm going to scoot in. They do make, I want to be close to you, scissors that are designed for having um, like a, 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 a rimply edge that's designed for perforations. But if you don't have one, which I do not, um, I just have this one which is kind of an ocean wavy one, but I think it's fine. I think it, it, it gets the point across. Um, I have other ones. I have, this is another wavy line, uh, but those are the only two that I have. I got them at a thrift store in a, in a package there. They are Fiskars and I found them, I think they're Fiskars, in a kit but there was one set missing, and I think that one set was probably the postage one because the only time I've seen them brand new is in sets. Um, but these work fine. So I'm just going to go ahead and cut these. Try to keep it where you can see. Ooh, I can see some of these are a little close, but and we'll do the best we can. So I'm just going to cut out and cut out, leaving just... I can trim this up, leaving just a little white border because I think that makes it look just a little more postage. There. What do you think? I think it looks like a stamp. Isn't that fun? Okay. You know, I kind of forgot a step, but that's all right. We're going to go ahead and, and make up for it now. And I'm just going to set this little guy right here. The franking, we need to frank them. Now, not all stamps need to be franked. You, you, you've you gotten mail before and the stamp didn't get canceled. But I'm gonna go ahead, grab my ink again. And I have a little acrylic block and I've got my little frank right here to put it on an angle. And I'm just gonna put this on willy-nilly. I'm not going to like really, really line them up. And sometimes they're going to be a crisp stamp. Sometimes they'll be a lousy stamp. That's how the post office works, I'm telling you. So here we go. I'm just going to hit these with a frank. And when we cut them out, it may not even all hit. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. A man, a lady. Okay, now I told you you don't have to have one of these, and I'm going to show you that. So I got, eh, I'm making a mess. So I've got this music note stuff, and what I'm going to try to do is get just the the lines of it. But you'll see what I mean. Um, this is a little bit too big, but I really only want this part with the lines. So I'm going to just, it's not sticking. That happens. Get yourself your glue stick. Rub a little glue stick on the back. It is water soluble when it's wet, so you'll be able to go ahead and remove it and clean it off. See, sticks fine. So I'm gonna just try to ink it up right on that edge and then use it on a couple. See, it looks like it's franked. Here's another one. Boom. Yeah, that's fine. No one is going to examine it that closely. I'll make, do it on a couple more. Boom. Boom. And then I also have this little one that kind of looks like a, I don't know, some kind of a seal. And again, I'm going to just try to ink just the round part and then put that on. Yeah. See? Looks like it's a franking thing. There. Yeah. Here. So don't feel like you have to have or run out and buy because you don't. You don't. 
a lot of stuff will work. This guy never got a Frank, so we'll go ahead and give him one of these seals as well. There. Okay, so we got the little franking marks, and we're going to continue on our cutting out. So, and we'll see if it looks like we've got some postage. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just cut right along one of these lines, staying as close to the top row of stamps as I can. There. And then cutting here. So what's the weather like by you? I'm in Michigan and it's March. I'm not positive, I think it's March 11. But, you know, I live in an imaginary world. I don't always know what time it is or what day it is, but both. So, but it is snowing right now. It's early in the morning, Sunday morning. However, it is uh, supposed to get in the 40s. So snowing now while I'm with you, but by lunchtime, the snow should be melted. So as they say in Michigan, if you don't like the weather, wait 10 minutes and you will have different weather. Does this feel like an ephemera? project that you can do, let me know in the in the comments. And if it doesn't, tell me why. Because I'm interested to know what I could do to make it better. I'm trying to show you using supplies that you have around. Oh, one thing I didn't mention, if you don't have some scissors that have a, a rumply edge, maybe you're a sewer and you've got some pinking shears. Now I know people that are into fabric don't like to mix their sewing scissors with paper, but maybe you have a pair that you're kind of done with. I, I don't know. Um, I don't even know if that's a thing, but um, the other thing is, although I don't see decorative shears frequently, I won't say never, but I don't see them frequently in the thrift stores, I do see them more frequently at garage sales, and I see them at... Um, where else? Garage sales, thrift stores. Oh, um, things like uh, estate sales, stuff like that. Uh, rummage sales. Rummage sales at churches, you can get some awfully good prices. And I mean, you know, you got to think about the charity that you're also supporting. So if they've got stuff marked ridiculously low, I, I don't want to take advantage of them. I just give them some extra money for like a tip jar, you know. I'll be a human. So here we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one this way. And you can just see how we're, we're rifling right through these at a pretty good clip. There. Making fake postage. I wonder, is that like making counterfeit money? I don't think so. And the reason why I don't think so is because we're not going to try to use them. I mean, please do not stick this on your bills and send them out because there's a possibility you won't get it. That one kind of smudged, but I'm not worried about it because look on my finger. But if you go and look at your postage, if you don't think they're smudging, look again. So I'm just taking a scrap piece of paper out of the garbage and I'm going to try to get that off of my hands so I don't continue to smudge it. But that's because some of these surfaces are on the shiny side. And so the ink hasn't dried yet. It will dry and it will stop smudging. I'm just not being patient. Honestly, if I was making these, I would put this, the franking stamp on and I'd walk away. I would definitely walk away and let that ink dry. The other thing you can do is hit it with your heat gun and that will help set. Isn't that pretty? And that's one that has the music notes as the franking. I don't think it matters. One iota. All right. Here we've got the lady with her, what is new to her, a mana microwave. And I think this kind of a retro picture, if it's not really on stamps, it should be. So I think it's fun. Okay. Oh, got another one. 
So like I was saying, it's snowing right now outside my window. I can see it. My window's right there. And uh, yeah, it's snowing, but it's only supposed to be an inch or less. So here where I live, they've got snow removal down to a talent. And uh, it, it's unlike any place I've ever lived. And they take and they will shovel the snow up in parking lots. They will load it into these huge dump trucks. And I guess they throw it into Lake Michigan. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Don't get upset if that's a bad thing. I don't, I, I think that's what they do. Okay, so we're up to the little pictures from that book that I'm getting ready to turn into an art journal. If that's something you'd like to see, let me know. Hit, hit the hit the comments. You know, for especially for us brand new YouTube creators, and at the time that I'm doing this, this is only like my third video, um, it really, really does help YouTube believe that we're putting out some quality. And, and I only want you to hit, hit the like and subscribe if you think what we're doing is quality. One of the things I do plan on doing is, um, if, if you're interested, uh, creating a video on how you can turn your art into a business like I am and what it takes and what are some of the fables about doing such a thing because there are, there, there's misinformation and, but I'm doing it. And if you want to take that journey with me, I'd be happy to have you along. So let me know. Comments are engagements. And those of you who are considering making unkind comments, YouTube doesn't care. So I'll still get credit for engagement. So go ahead and let her rip. As I said in an earlier video, my self-worth is not based on your lousy opinion, if that's what it is. So you're not going to hurt my feelings. As a matter of fact, why don't you just move along if that's the kind of comments you leave. But hey, it takes all kinds. I embrace everyone. Try to. But I think as I told you in an earlier video, I'm a nurse. So one of the things nurses do have to do is learn to get along. And you know, we all need to get along, don't we? There we go. This is that Hunt's label with that little heart. And I think it looks just like a stamp. Got it off of a can that was in my cupboard anyway. Some of these I'm leaving a little bit more of a edge. Some of them a little less. And it, it really, it, it it's just up to you. Now this, these two are pretty odd shaped, but I think they're going to make a darling stamp. Faux postage, I guess I should say. There. Whoops. And this is the triangle one. And again, I have seen in the U.S. here modern art postage. So I think this can be adorable. Do you remember? And I don't know if they still make it. Remember the love stamps? That was such a pretty series. And if you were getting married and sending out invitations, or if you were having a baby shower and sending out invitations, now I guess it's more of a gender reveal. You could use those love stamps on your invitations you were sending out. And they were just, just adorable. Just adorable. Okay. Last one. Hooray. And I'm going to leave this one just like this. I'm going to leave it bigger. So, should we take a look at some of these? Here, I'll get another piece of paper. I should get a colored piece of paper. Okay, I will. I'm digging. I'm finding. Okay. Nothing's easy when you're trying to do a video. There. All right. How's that? And let's lay out some of our postage. Aren't they pretty? I think so. 
and you can use this in your art as faux postage. I think they're adorable. And again, you can go out and buy faux postage and I just try to use what I have because I have plenty and just use it up. And there's those, these are those flower stamps that we use part of. If you have some floral stamps, this was from a, a can of tomato sauce and another one that's modern art. This was from that book that I'm harvesting. It's a little, it's a little house. And this one got franked a lot. Hard to tell what it was, but still pretty. And this was the, I don't know what you guys can still see. That was the floral arrangement. If I'm off, off the screen, I'm sorry. But this, here's the little porch chair. This was the silly putty ad. And the last one is another floral. If you enjoyed this project, please like and subscribe. I'm Julie Torrens. I'm so grateful that you joined me. And if you have ideas of other ephemera that you'd like to learn to make, let me know in the comments. Thanks. Bye.